can't escape me, Muse. I am there. When you least expect me, expect me. Just around the corner. Or maybe creeping up behind you. I'm acting like it's October, and it's a good time to frighten you. Well, it's not, and I'm not. Actually, Muse, I have something in my eye. I have something I want to talk about to you that's kind of special. I want to talk about and to beta readers. You know, beta readers. You don't? Hmm. Well, let me explain to you. At least I'll explain to you from my perspective, because I think that every writer uses beta readers differently. A beta reader, effectively, is someone who reads a book before it's published to let an, let an author know that the book works. Because as we write a book, we know everything about the book. Well, sometimes. And as we're writing it, there probably will be things that we don't see, or we might introduce problems, or make connections that aren't really there, or we will assume that connections are there that aren't really there. Either way, we always need to have other eyes looking at our work. It's crucial. In fact, I would say that it is one of the single most important steps in the process. Now, just the other day, I finally, yay, sent Defying Gravity to beta readers. Now, this time around, I, I have a crew of beta readers that I tend to use. And I used some of them for this book, but I also wanted to reach out for different beta readers. Now, partially because this particular story is very personal and it also is somewhat based on a real experience that I had. And I reached out to a couple of those that experienced the same thing I had. In other words, they were in the show that Defying Gravity kind of centers around. I wanted them to read it because I wanted to get the perspective of somebody who experienced the same thing that I did. Now, granted, this is a fictionalized take on that, so it's very different than the actual experience. But having someone that was there alongside of me would be able to give me insight that I might not see in this book. So I added them, and then I added a few other beta readers, some of which who are in intimately familiar with the world of theater, who can tell me if what I have written actually tell not only tells the story that I wanted to tell, but serves as the metaphor that I wanted to speak to. So I have that level of beta reader as well. And then I have a couple of beta readers who have nothing to do with the world of theater. And I did that because I needed to make sure that this book didn't just speak to those in the know. I wasn't just speaking to the choir because I need this book to be of broader interest than just folks that have experienced the theater. Now, granted, that's a fairly large audience anyway, but I didn't want to just be limited to those people because I think that this book speaks to a number of different mediums of art as well as just living, as just life. Is, is just being human. Um, and, and so I have a fairly broad spectrum of beta readers involved in this. And I think the lesson learned here is that every book should probably have a broad spectrum of readers, regardless of the genre. You don't want to just have beta readers that love the genre that you write. You might want to have, say, for example, you write romance. You might want to throw in some fantasy beta readers. Or, or if you write horror, you might want to throw in a romance reader, although that might be a tough sell because they're not really used to reading horror, but you get the idea. Beta readers are a necessity. And if you're a writer and you're not using beta readers, 
you should. Now, let me tell you how I use beta readers because I tend to use them differently than other writers. Other writers, what their process looks somewhat like this. They write the book, they read the book to make sure that everything, all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, and then they send it to their editor. Then they go back and forth with their editor until that's done, and then they get it proofed. And once it's proofed, they then send it to the beta readers to make sure everything works. Now, I have a problem with that process, just for me, not for you. I have a problem with that process because when you send a book to beta readers, a beta reader may say, yeah, this scene doesn't work. And you may look at it and go, oh, she's right. That scene doesn't work and you'll have to rework it. What happens after you rewrite a scene that a beta reader has mentioned? It needs to be re-edited. So you'll have to send it back to your editor and then back to your proofer. So instead, what I do is I write the book and then I give it a read after I've written it to make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. And then I send it to my beta readers. And then I, I tell the beta readers, the only thing you're looking for is to make sure that the story works. And for any inconsistency you might find. You're not editing, you're not proofing. So don't worry about that stuff. <clears throat> I have somebody that I hire to do that. So once they send their feedback to me, I work that feedback in and then I give it another read and then I send it off to my editor. I think that is a more efficient process because I'm not having to send it back to the editor after the editor's already done their work because more than likely that editor's already gone on to work on other books and you're going to have to wait in line. You don't want to wait in line. You want to get it all done. You want it to be efficient. And that has always been my goal as a writer to be efficient because efficiency means that I can work more cleanly and, and be more productive with my work. So, and, and this has been, my process has been 20 years in the making and I think it's fairly solid at this point. It doesn't mean there isn't, there aren't improvements that can be made because there are always improvements that can be made to the process. And one of those big improvements is for you to add beta readers and don't just add one beta reader. You need multiple beta readers. For me, the absolute minimum amount of beta readers that I will use for a book is three. And it's just a good round, not a round number, but it's a good number because you're going to get three completely different opinions. And make sure that if you're using three beta readers, that those beta readers aren't the same, that they don't enjoy the same kind of books. Now, I always like to use beta readers, at least one beta reader that's a fan of my work because they have followed me along and they know my voice and they probably would know when I've strayed from it. And then I use, try to get a beta reader that's never read any of my books or maybe have read one or two, but isn't a huge fan, whatever. And then someone else, someone that's non-genre or a, a fiction, a, a non-fiction reader. So you, you just kind of add variety into it and it makes everything so much better. And here's another rule that I have with regards to beta readers. If one beta reader, let's say you have three beta readers. If one beta reader says there's a problem, that could be an opinion. If more than one beta reader says you have the same problem, you have a problem. And that means you have to address that problem. And you cannot, you cannot go, they don't know what they're talking about because they do, they're readers. And more than likely, if you have somebody beta reading for you, they read a lot because they enjoy it. And they really enjoy the process of, of helping writers. So if you have more than one beta reader that says there's a particular problem in your manuscript, pay attention to it. If you have three beta readers that say the same thing, you yeah, got a real problem. So you always have to take, you, you cannot, you cannot place your ego in between you and your beta readers. Your beta readers are there for a reason. They are not there to pat you on the back. It's great when they do. But their purpose is not to just stroke your ego. Their purpose is to point out problems if they are there. So let them, let them do the job that you have hired them for, hired them for, because most likely beta readers aren't paid. Beta readers tend to do it for the love of the read and to help you. Now, now I want to talk to beta readers because I don't know that most authors take the time 
necessary to show their appreciation for beta readers. Beta readers tends to be a thankless job. Now, I always put beta readers in the dedication, not the dedication, but the first front page, the front matter of a book. I always list the, the editor and I list the beta readers because beta readers tend to, it's, it's a thankless job. And yes, you may, as a, after a beta reader sent you their feedback or even when you send them the book, you may, say, you may say thank you so much. But the truth of the matter is, is I don't know that they really know how important that what they do is to us writers. Without beta readers, our books might not be worthy of publication. Beta readers find the problems that we can't see. Beta readers do something that we cannot do. We simply cannot do it. Because we know the story, like the back of our hand, and we can fill in the blanks because we know the characters and their backstories and all this. The beta readers might not know that and they can go, this confused me. It might not confuse you as a writer, but it confused the beta reader. So you've got to fix that, right? And when you find, as a writer, when you find a good beta reader, I mean a really good beta reader, and I have at least two outstanding beta readers, and they know who they are. When you find them, you treat them with kindness. You make sure they know that they are appreciated, and you thank them profusely. Because, like I said, you can't do what they do. And to, to add to this, every once in a while, I will ask another writer to beta read a book of mine. It's only every once in a while. The thing is, is that writers are biased. And a writer, as a beta reader, may be reading your book and go, Ooh, damn, I wish I would have written this. And there might be a little bit of jealousy involved. Or a writer may say, yeah, I would have done it differently. Here's how I would have done it. Well, you don't want to know how another writer would have done it. You just want to know if what you wrote works. So beta readers tend to just be readers. And I don't mean just, they are readers. And if it weren't for readers, we wouldn't write. So not only are beta readers special because they're readers, they're special because they are willingly helping you improve your work. And beta readers, pat yourselves on the back. Every writer that I know who has found a good beta reader holds them very close to the chest. It's a very rare occasion that I will, that a reader, or another writer will come to me and say, hey, I need a good beta reader. And I'll go, yeah, I got a couple you can borrow. I should, but man, you just wanna hold them to yourself. You wanna keep them secret because they are your special sauce. They are your secret weapon to help improve your books. And beta readers, you don't get enough thanks for that. And you deserve it. You deserve so much thanks for what you do. So please, it may seem like a thankless job to some of you, but it's not. It is a most profoundly important job that you do. And when you're good at it, you are someone else. You are special and you are gold. And I just happen to have a couple of them that are and I won't share their names because I don't want anyone reaching out for them. Truth be told, I will share their names when someone asks, but and I have actually in, I think it might have been Hopetown, I gave special thanks to those two beta readers because they deserved it. I like to gush over people. And I especially like to gush over people that help me do my job. Like my editors. 
of which I'm still kind of in the process of finding a new regular editor. I think I found one, but we'll see. She's edited one book of mine so far, and that was for Devil Dog Press. That was Fear. And she did an outstanding job. She really did. But I had a relationship with my last editor, and it was good, and I respected her so much, and she taught me so much. I would still be making some really silly mistakes had it not been for her. That's a good editor. So, you know, when things are working, you don't want them to change. And they did, but I'll move on. And, and hopefully this new editor will, will fit in with my process well. I'll know soon because I'll be sending whew, defying gravity to her. As you've probably realized, defying gravity is really important to me. I would say that, in fact, one of my beta readers has already told me that she sees more of me in this book than any book I've written. And that is the truth. And that's, it's not scary. I'm not scared of it. I, I've, I'm not afraid of this book. I'm, I'm not afraid of people getting a glimpse into my artistic world and in, in, into my artistic existence within here. I'm not afraid of that. Um, but there is something about releasing a work of fiction where you know that your heart exists within the pages of that book. And I don't mean blood, sweat, and tears kind of heart, you know, where you've practically bled into the pages of a book to get it, to write it. I'm talking about you are in that book. You have split yourself open from stem to stern, pulled that flesh apart, and let everything be bare. It's almost like you're standing in front of the world absolutely naked to say, this is me. And I was actually kind of proud when my beta reader pointed that out to me because that tells me that what I was feeling as I was writing that book came out. And that's a good thing. Anyway, Muse, that's all I got to say. This is just a, a big gushing thank you to beta readers. So writers, if you don't have any, if you're not using any, shame on you. Find them and use them and thank them profusely all the time. Every time they willingly beta read a book for you. Pat them on the back, thank them, send them chocolates, whatever you have to do to appease them because they deserve it. Just like you, Muse. You deserve all the thanks too. Why? Because you, Muse, are awesome. <laughs>